Well, the U.S. Central Bank delivered its biggest interest rate increase in more than two decades in an effort to choke off accelerating inflation. But financial markets have largely taken the half a percentage point increase in their stride. Still concern about inflation remains and so too concern about uncertainty in the global economy. Well, let's discuss the impact with Lindsay Piexa. Uh, she's the chief economist at Stiefel. Well, Dr. Piexa, many Asia central banks have been under pressure to follow the Fed due to rising inflation, but the economies are still picking up from the pandemic. So how will they balance choking off inflation without derailing growth? Well, this is the challenge that I think most central banks are, are facing at this point, the Fed included. As we heard from the chairman yesterday, the Fed is willing to take very aggressive action to rein in inflation. At the same time, the chairman struck a somewhat more dovish tone, saying increasingly aggressive rate increases are really not on the table at this point. So the market was beginning to price in the probability of a 75 basis point increase in June. The chairman saying that's not being actively considered by committee members, reining down expectations then still for a 50 basis point increase in June, but a noticeably more benign move. So central bankers around the world at this point are really trying to walk that fine line between raising rates enough to get prices back under control without undermining the domestic activity. So then how would rising U.S. interest rates uh, affect Asian economies, which are now keeping rates low or could cut them further? We're talking about China and Japan, which, as we know, are also suffering deep currency weakness. Absolutely. So as the Fed continues to raise rates, this is going to raise borrowing costs uh, uh, across the across a number of, of different sectors. So this is going to interrupt the uh, capital flows that we see as it becomes increasingly more attractive to invest dollars here in the U.S. market. So this will drive capital flows out of other uh, potential markets or depend, potential uh, potential depositories for that capital. So it really is this game between different central banks as capital looks where best to be invested, where best to receive that higher yield. And this can create a, uh, a sort of race to the top as one central bank hikes, others feel pressure then to follow suit or take uh, additional steps in, in lockstep. What is the risk then, you think, of uh, capital flight from Asia's emerging economies? Well, that's exactly right. So as the U.S. continues to raise interest rates, this is going to create more of an incentive, as I mentioned, for those capital flows to come out of areas where rates are, are continuously lower, yields are at least relatively lower, and flood into the areas where we are seeing central banks take more aggressive action. Not only did the Fed raise rates, but of course, we've seen the BOE follow suit. And again, this will incite that capital flow into areas where the return for capital is increasing increasingly higher. Well, thanks for that. Lidzi Pigza there, Chief Economist at Stiefel.